ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel for another third-party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. Now, today, we are taking a look at the X-20Y Plant Lady, a.k.a. Poison Ivy. Now, I've been wanting more members of Batman's Rose Gallery forever in 1-6 scale, and finally, we have a Poison Ivy. Yeah, I'm really excited. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Do bear in mind, this is a third-party, unlicensed, unofficial figure. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. This is by no means a promotional video. This is a review on a figure I picked up for my own personal collection. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, first of all, this box is absolutely massive and yeah, I'm pretty curious to find out why. On the front, an image of the prototype version of the figure, X2Y down below. On the side, movable eyes, a very welcome feature. Then on the back, a bunch of product shots plus warnings and legal info. Now, I don't know why it's taken third-party companies so long to finally start making comic-style versions of Batman's rogues gallery. I'm hoping that eventually we get a Penguin and a Riddler and a Ra's al Ghul, but for now, yeah, I'm really happy that we finally have a Poison Ivy. First in-hand impressions are, number one, she's not wearing a lot of clothing, but number two, this body feels nice and heavy. I wouldn't be surprised if that is indeed a Fison body. Up top, we do have one foam block, then down below, another, and I'm starting to see why the box is as big as it is. What we are going to do now is get all of her accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything she comes with. Normally, I'd be saying starting off with the display base first, but unfortunately, she doesn't have one. No plant throne, no standard display base, she comes with a bunch of vines plus this plant creature. Now, I like the plant creature, he's got some very spiky teeth, some glossy red eyes, the mouth also is glossy and wet looking, the rest of him is nicely painted, there's some lighter green dry brushing and some dark green shading. Plus, it's kind of molded to sit on her shoulders, and you will see that a little bit later. I don't know that we have to look at every single one of these vines, because they're painted in the same way. Dark green with some lighter coloured green for the thorns. They kind of look a little bit cartoony and comic booky as compared to the creature, but yeah. If you wanted to go with vines for Poison Ivy, you do get this round one, plus this longer one. I don't really know if I'm going to be using these in the display, but at the very least, I appreciate the options. This one, though, I could absolutely see myself using. Let's be honest, those two are really weird shapes, whereas this one slides onto the arm. Kind of like she's projecting out a vine. Maybe she's about to capture Batman, who knows? Either way, yeah, this one floats my boat. Now, it does have this kind of spiral-like section that you slide the arm through. It's not made of rubbery plastic, it's a firmer, more brittle plastic, so please, when you're installing this, do be careful. In addition to the open palm hands on the body, we get a pair of gripping hands, but that's it. No closed fists, no open palm hands, no gesturing hands. Super simple. I don't really love that, I would have appreciated more hands, but at the very least, the nails are painted. The same thing can be said for the swap out feet. I like the sculpt here, there is no skin texture, but you do have some bright red for the nails. What we are going to do now though, is get Poison Ivy herself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses, but wearing all of the additional armour. Yeah, that's Pamela Isley, I think. It's not from any comic book run or style I'm familiar with. I'm pretty sure it's their own take on Poison Ivy, but... I'm all for it, I love the way this looks. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. The skin tone and skin texture is non-existent, it's a very pale body. I do like the proportions and the choice of the seamless body, but I kinda wish it was green at the same time. They could have done some adjustments to the outfit here and there, plus the head sculpt looks a little big. It 
kinda comes across, it straddles that line between one six scale figure and Barbie. The big difference is you get a ton of accessories and you can move the eyes and the articulation is really good. But other than that, yeah, I reckon this figure might be a tough sell. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the head sculpt first. I like it, but I don't know how much of that is just that we've been starved for 1-6 scale villains and now that we finally have this Poison Ivy, I kinda like it by default. Now the sculpt is soft, the skin is very smooth, there is pretty much no skin texture whatsoever. On camera, her head sculpt looks like a slightly greener tinge as compared to the body. Trust me though, in person it's not a huge deal, the colour match looks way better in hand than on camera. Now I like the really vibrant red for the rooted hair, although there is a lot of it, so you will have to do some futzing, maybe use some product just to tame it down and get it to sit in place a little more. Cause when you style it, yeah, I reckon this is going to look really good. I do like the vibrant red for the lipstick, and if you're wondering, okay Justin, you said it's got moving eyes, how on earth do they work seeing as though she has rooted hair? Well, you remove this back piece and as you can see on the inside, two posts connected to the eyes, so yes, you can move them and pretty much put them in any position that you want, depending on what your pose dictates. Now, you can also adjust the height of the head, it can sit up a little bit higher or go down a little bit lower. As you can see, now I have it a lot lower, it looks kinda goofy. So for me, I like to adjust it and have it sitting up just a little bit higher. But of course, all of that is down to personal preference, it's entirely up to you. The same thing can be said with the outfit, you can have her wearing as little of this plant armor as you choose. I personally have gone for putting it all on, I just think that's the best look for the figure. Now the body doesn't have any skin texture, it's smooth, it feels like a Fison body, meaning on the inside there is a metal endoskeleton, it feels really sturdy. Now does that mean you can put her in crazy poses forever? I don't know, we'll have to wait and see, but for now it feels really high quality. Now the outfit, if you can even really call it that, does consist of multiple rubbery pieces painted to look like her green costume from the books. Now there is some shading and dry brushing up on top, I like the sculpt, I like the integration of the vines and the flowers, plus you've got some real string sections, that means it's a little bit more flexible, cause if this was all rubber you would get pretty much no articulation or pivot whatsoever. But seeing as though there are some strings tying the top portion together, yeah, it can move just a little more. Now they simply slide on over the rubber. It is a little bit tricky to do, cause sliding these pieces on over the skin, yeah, this friction, it'll take a little bit more time. But take your time and you will be perfectly fine. Now this skirt piece was kind of annoying, cause you do have to peg it in position around the front and it was deformed, it was warped, it didn't want to go on the body. So what I did was got the hairdryer, simply pegged it in, held it in place, heated it up and moulded it to the shape of the body. Now it sits on there a lot better and in my display, yeah, I'm going to keep this on all the time anyway. Coming down to the legs, they are pretty much just exposed flesh, there is still no skin texture, they are very very pale. That's something I didn't mention before but yes. The skin tone is really pale. You do have some definition for the knees, so it's not just all 100% smooth. I like the way that looks personally, although I would have loved if she'd come with the green tights, kinda like Poison Ivy in Batman the Animated Series. I am tempted to try and customize this figure myself, cause for me, Batman the Animated Series Poison Ivy, yeah, that's my favorite look for this character. Now down below for these shin guards, if you can really call them that, cause technically they would be leaves and vines, one side is bigger than the other, yeah, I'm all for an asymmetrical design. You can also move them up and down, like I said with these pieces though, friction is your worst enemy here. They do tend to ride up and kind of lock in position, I would suggest bringing them down a little bit lower, so you can hide the seam between the feet and the body. 
Speaking of the feet, they are fully exposed, but I do like the red painted nails, just like what we have up here for her hands. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Harl Ivy being the 2.0 Harley Quinn from Sideshow, and the third party Poison Ivy, plus third wheeling it, the original Sideshow Catwoman on a custom Fison body. Now, right off the bat, I'm really happy. These three aren't perfect in their own right, but when you bring them together, three awesome members of Batman's rogues gallery, kinda classic, also modern, very comic booky, and that's what I was hoping for when I set out to build my comic style rogues gallery. Now Poison Ivy is showing a lot more skin, she also has a larger head as compared to the other two, but I don't reckon that ruins this, as I said. I'm still pretty happy. Next up, here we have the newest version of Sideshow's Batman. By the way, still really like that figure. As you can see, he's significantly taller than Ivy, but you can mix and match your figures if you want to go for a different Batman, the original Sideshow one, the SSR one, or something else entirely. You can absolutely do that. And I reckon this Poison Ivy is simple and comic booky enough that she's going to pretty much go with any version of the Dark Knight in 1-6 scale. Going over articulation, do bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Starting off with the head sculpt, number one, she has moving eyes if you count that for articulation, but number two, there are a series of joints inside the body plus a ball joint for the head sculpt. Looking forward to there, going back the full way, swivel as well as pivot. The arms will go up to there, they will go forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down. Double bend at the elbow that incorporates a swivel plus a double ball peg for the wrist peg. The torso will crunch forward and back even though she's wearing robbery armor, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs go forward to there, Going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh underneath the silicon skin, double bend at the knee that does go the full way, plus of course a double ball peg down here for the ankle. Wrapping up on the X2Y 1-6 scale Poison Ivy, a company that I'd never heard of, but it turns out they know how to make a decent figure. She's not perfect, I would have loved a display base, there is no skin texture or paint on the body whatsoever. Plus, she doesn't come with a ton of hands, but she does come with multiple sets of feet and some really cool accessories. You can also mix and match the armor pieces if you want her to be more or less scantily clad. You also have rooted hair in this fiery red. Plus, moving eyes, a really nice touch by a third party company. Now the question is, if someone who doesn't know a ton about DC walked into the room and saw this figure, would their mind go to Poison Ivy immediately, or would they think, ooh, it's a bit weird, who's this scantily clad redhead? Well, I don't know. I see Poison Ivy, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this you do too, but let me know down below, would this figure fly in your collection? Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. I have popped the link in the description below for your reference purposes only. Don't forget, this is not a promotional video, this is a review on a third party unlicensed unofficial figure. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.